Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, this is going to be the Collegiate Star League Dota 2 tournament. This is week 11 with Rutgers versus Robert Morris University. I am Zingle313. Jo joining me will be Hachiko and a special guest, Gorgon the Wonder Cow. What's up everyone? Uh, Gorgon will be get getting back to us in a second. So, well, the oh, yeah. there he is. He's here, he's here. Sorry, I'm listening to to some some stuff on the side. Oh, okay. You know, I, I, I didn't. The game's not going. I, I didn't know we were. All right, we we uh, uh will be starting very shortly. It seems so. Today we have the teams: Robert Morris versus Rutgers. We saw Rutgers last week. They have had a dominant performance uh, every time we've seen them play, and they are ten and one so far. So they are definitely a strong team to look out for. But Robert Morris also not to uh. Nothing to kind of, you know, underestimate. They are a good team. This is actually going to be their first game of the spring season because their previous matches against UC San Diego and Waterloo, both of those teams had dropped out and they had a bye week. So they have not yet to play on the 7.0 patch and they might have something to show despite having a, uh, you know, on paper worse record than Rutgers. We just realized uh, Shibby is playing for them. The Leviathan Shibby. Is this him? It is him. His profile checks out. <laughs> uh, his friend list uh, definitely has the right people. So we're going to see a semi-professional player in this match as well play against uh, Rutgers, Heimamar, Chinese exchange students. Yeah, it's going to be quite a game, I think. Absolutely. And uh, the game will be starting soon, but once again, we would love to say thank you to our sponsors who are making all of this possible. Yeah, I just gotta like to give a quick shout out to our three sponsors. First one being Band Gaming. Band is a social app and the primary social app of the CSL with many features such as creating groups, which can be good for your CSL team or club, the boards, calendar functions, polls, chats, and uh, as of recent call functionality. Band is a premier social experience for you and fellow gamers alike. Find out more at uh, band.us slash home or find them in the Google Play Store or Apple App Store. I'm just going to pitch in here friends, with the band gaming thing okay. as well. Is like the, the biggest mistake that we talk about, I think, at least Toffees and me, if, for, for CSL teams and for like middling tier players, is that their communication is bad. And you you got to be able to communicate across a, a decent application with a, a decent amount of variability in what it's going to provide you to do. Um, I know that a lot of the teams that have switched over to band have really liked it, so... Uh, just, just a little sincere plug there. All right, yeah, very good on. point there. Because as a player myself, uh, well, my personal team was formed with like a group of friends, and we all like uh, lived in the dorms together, or lived knew or knew each other in like real life. But a lot of these college teams are like formed with like high, like high skill players or whatever, and they don't really know each other too well in terms of uh, interacting in real life. They just kind of like know each other online, and definitely an app like this would allow you to just keep. Uh, and track of each other and uh, what's going on in terms of like if you want to play practice and other things of course they can do that through steam but it's not uh the same as having somewhere outside that to do that and uh our next sponsor as well is twitch and as always we show nothing but gratitude for the largest streaming platform in gaming to support our collegiate esports from pax east and west and many more events the CSL wouldn't be what it is today without the help and support from them. Be on the lookout for cool opportunities to get involved with Twitch in the near future, and be sure to show them some love for their support on uh, their Twitter and Facebook. And our third sponsor is Asus. We want to welcome Asus to the CSL family for the 2016 to 2017 season, the provider of everything esports from all their wonderful products such as monitors, laptops, routers, graphics cards, motherboards, and more. Don't enter your next battle unless you're equipped with Asus. Alrighty, and it looks like this is perfect timing. Draft has just started, so we are going to be underway. Uh, uh, Rutgers did get uh, the dire side. It is going to be RMU on the Radiant. And it seems like no time is ticking out here. Oh, there it is. Everybody's loaded in. First pick will go the way of Rutgers as well. So Rutgers first pick Dyer, RMU second pick Radiant. So what we saw from last week, they really favored the Slark. And if RMU uh, 
did some scouting at all, they might uh, decide to take it out in the first phase here because it's not quite common for teams to pick Slark in the first phase, but we did see Rutgers do that twice. Right. We also uh, see other heroes such as like Lone Druid and uh, Underlord. Very common first round vans. And this Shadow Demon, I'm pretty sure Rutgers banned at first phase every time. Yeah, you, the Shadow Demon opens up so many opportunities for you to really move in with a variety of strategies, but all of those strategies involve the potential for Snowball Push. So if you ban the Shadow Demon, you're really getting rid of the efficacy of a Juggernaut, you're getting rid of the efficacy of a Luna, you're getting rid of the efficacy of potentially even a Sniper um, or a Stacked Drow Venge strategy. All of these things that, that we do tend to see in CSL. Uh, do much better if you have a Shadow Demon available. Exactly, and not only that, it uh, bans out a lot of the combos, so you don't see those Leshrac heroes, the Lina heroes, nearly mm -hmm. as much because they require that setup. So it's a two-prong ban, and I really like it. Yeah, I, it's it's a very high return ban, right? It's For for one slot, you're getting rid of, of a lot of heroes. Efficacy. Now, granted, you're not getting any of those heroes out of the pool, so they still can be picked against you, but you are deterring it, and it, I think it's really good... Uh, metagame play. Uh, for sure. However, then the second ban of just a Viper. I'm going to go to that before I go to Armuse ban. This is not something we're used to. This is not something we see often. Viper is just a very cut and dry, straightforward lane winner and then group up and push hero. Maybe they know something we don't about RMU that they love Viper and they've picked it maybe in all of their winning matches. But, you know, we, we'll see shortly. And it also could just be because Viper beats Ember Spear, which they instantly first pick. I don't think they even took a second to take that up. Yeah, so they're uh, going to follow this similar draft pattern. It, it might see just Slark here as well, as this is what they played in game one last week against, uh, was it? Let me check. RIT, I think. RIT, RIT. Yes. So. First uh, phase bands from the RMU squad of Slardar and Underlord. I'm a big fan of these bands because those heroes are just so pervasive in the current meta. The Underlord has been... Every time this gets through the draft, it just gets first phase picked, it seems, and the hero is extremely strong in lane. And then Slardar, you know, you can play it as a 3, you can play it as a 4, and I think it's just super effective in both of those roles. So good bands definitely uh, kind of clears the field. But yeah, Slardar also provides a lot to you if you there's a bounty hunter on the other team, right? Like, yeah. if you are thinking about running a bounty hunter, you probably need to get rid of the Slardar just because he provides the vision, but he also provides amplified damage, which is pretty good against a hero as squishy as Bounty Hunter, who is agility-based, which means that he does rely pretty heavily on the little amount of armor that he does have for his effective hit mm -hmm. point bolstering. And likewise with Centaur, strength hero, not mm -hmm. much armor, you just kind of take that away, and that hero is surprisingly not tanky. And then, as Hachiko said, with the Slark, the Slark Ember 1-2, they could have taken a note from Rucker's uh, casted game last week, but this is the same stuff. Yeah, Slark is an interesting hero to play up against a bounty hunter, because a lot of Slarks do end up going Echo Saber into Shadow Blade, which the bounty hunter can help deal with. But of course, you are able to purge off the bounty hunter's track, even if you're about to die. Just the ability to get rid of track before you die is really valuable, because that's... 40 to 60 percent of the value of the bounty hunter is just track gold right. and another 20 to 30 is just vision and if you're a slark you take away a, a decent amount as a carry at least uh, of what that bounty hunter would provide against you personally mm -hmm. and we see the unconventional build coming out from Rutgers slark with the blade mail so he doesn't even go the, the i don't think in the games he went for shadow until like later in the game and if not, he might have skipped it overall. I'm not, I don't quite remember, but I, he did start with the Shadow Blade, I know that for sure, and then built into the Echo Saber. He so, started with the Blade Mill, you mean? Yeah, the Blade yeah. Mill. What did I say before? You said uh, start with the Shadow Blade, but uh, right, yeah, 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 this... Yeah, this, yeah. this, this I actually really team. like that. The Blade Mill, Echo Saber, skip the Shadow Blade build. If you are going to be running a very aggressive style gameplay and your opponents are going to be kind of relatively forced back which in ember spirit also implies that you're going to want to take control of the map pretty early um if you're forcing your opponents to be relatively close to towers anyway the shadow blade doesn't give you a ton of utility whereas the blade mail might right um certainly right. they both have their place but but i do like the creativity in that and I, I think that has potential to be very good i'm not sure if you actually saw the game we casted last week but it was with the rutgers team they actually had three heroes where their first two items were blink blade mail it was slark ember and <laughs> axe all three of them 
two core items, Blink Blade Mail, and they just kind of ran at the other team 10-15 minutes in. It was, it was interesting to watch because that's not really traditional for these heroes, but yeah. it worked. If you have three it's people really doing it, it works. Yeah, it, you obviously that, that plan has a lot of faults in it. A, you need to get the Blade Mail up relatively early. Like you're, all your heroes have to get farmed pretty quickly in order mm -hmm. to make that work to get it early enough. But also, your opponents can't really have split push heroes because if they do, you're just going to lose towers while you're running at people and face taking. Exactly. Uh, but if you are able to get it up really early and your opponents don't have the draft to deal with it, it absolutely shuts anything down. So I'm expecting a blink initiator that goes blade mail from Rutgers just because they did the same thing last week and it's shaping up to be a very similar matchup here. The bounty hunter doesn't actually provide too much to like winning lanes. Yes, it'll be annoying for Ember Spirit, but if if Rutgers plays it correctly, they might just be able to get the same exact strategy going. And that's, you know, it could work. The bands coming out from Invoker is just another hero that kind of wins mid against Ember. And then it looks like Rum, uh, RMU is actually banning out both supports with stuns. Yeah, interesting decision here from RMU to focus offlaners and support heroes instead of uh, going for the cores. And they're just going to allow Rutgers to have the cores they want, Ember and the Slark, and uh, get rid of the other heroes. Well, yeah, I mean, at, the, at this stage in the game, the cores are already picked, right? There's an offlaner yeah. that you could try to target down, but but honestly, getting rid of good supports is more important than getting rid of a good offlaner in most cases because the supports are going to be absolutely integral to how well Ember Spirit and Slark do, whereas the offlaner is going to be integrals uh, regarding how well the team will do in a fighting sense, in a pacing sense, in the middle of the game. Uh, if you want to get off to a good start, it's much better to control what your opponents are going to do with supports. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that one. The uh, Disruptor pick coming out, you know, ban two other supports and then pick a super good support against both of the cores that have already shown from Rutgers. It's uh, a good strategy, I'd say. A disruptor is very strong against both Slark and Ember with his Static Storm. If he catches them in that with the Kinetic Field, they're pretty much dead because they're pretty squishy heroes uh, at the early points in the game when Disruptor gets his 6. Mm -hmm. And then especially with the follow-up from, you know, a Centaur Blink Stomp that'll guarantee the setup of uh, Disruptor's ult, which, you know, can be hard to land and keep them in that field. But with that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this Slark and Ember have to be a little bit more cautious than they were in previous games. Yeah, well, you do always want to try to keep yourself, especially in CSL, from over-momentum-izing, is if I'm going to coin a uh, phrase there, <laughs> uh, from, from, being, from, from going from match to match with the exact same ideas. Uh, now, obviously, Rutgers is a really good team doing very, very well, and, and because of that, they get a little more leeway on this than than a lot of the teams that might be you know seven and three or something like that. But uh, there's a great variety of skill and strategy that comes out in CSL, and you know you might play three teams in a row that are just lot bottom of your bracket, and by bottom of your bracket I mean they're way below your skill level. And then you go into your fourth match. And you try to do this like rollsy lolzy strategy and find out like, oh, I was just playing the bottom of my bracket and I just threw a game for no reason. So I think it is always good for, even if you are going to do a very similar strategy throughout all of your matches, to make sure that you're sizing up each team individually rather than just saying, well, we're better than, than the field. Right. A little bit of insider info on this RMU squad, but I do recognize uh, at least three of these players to be high skill, high MMR mm -hmm. individual players. So this might be one of those scenarios that you're talking about where they just kind of underestimate RMU squad and then uh, they try to run the same lineup that does not quite work. But it looks like they're not going to go that blink blade mail. I'm pretty sure Timbersaw will go blade mail still just because that's how they love to play it. But it, uh, it will be a timber saw, most likely going into the offlane. Jakiro support picked up, so they're looking for one more support in that last pick, and another support's banned out for RMU, recognizing that. I like it. Yeah. Also, I, 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 like, I like the line. Go ahead. Is this void safe lane carry? We, I think we saw yeah. this one other time before, and it did not pan it out. It was in the well. RIT game. Yeah, and it did not pan out 
quite as well as they'd hoped. Uh, um, we were talking about that because in theory, Void should be good against these heroes, right? Ember Spirit Slark, he has that Chrono to lock them down. Even the Timber Saw, the time dilation uh, affects him a lot. He usually has to get like a Yules or something to get that off of him. Otherwise, he can't cast his spells anymore. But uh, just Void in general is not that strong in the patch, and uh, we really saw that in the RAT game where he just uh, had his ult on too long of cooldown. So even though they were able to win fights with the Chrono, uh, when it was off cooldown, they would just get run at and lose fights. And the uh, objectives as well. Yeah. So it looks like there's going to be a mid player is the last pick for RMU and Rutgers needs their last pick as a support. Uh, the bands are reflecting that. OD Look at how many bands Rutgers is dedicated to this mid matchup. When you first pick an Ember Spirit mid and you kind of commit to that role, you really want a... Uh, a one matchup or an easy matchup, so they just ban well, everything that beats them. They like, also respect know, to Shibby. If that Ember Spirit gets off to a good start, they they just win the game, right? They're yeah. old, Centaur Warrior is the only hero that can withstand uh, an Ember Spirit nuke yep. for, at like 23 minutes. Faceless <laughs> Void crumbles to it. He's very reliant on being able to backtrack damage with Time Walk. Disruptor right. and Bounty Hunter, very squishy. Uh, presumably, you're going to have. Uh, yeah, there we go. So your mid is also not very high health. Um, you really need to make sure this if this Ember Spirit gets off to a good start. It, and both their mobility spells uh, get affected by Root as well. So yeah, they won't be able to use that time walk and blink. Yeah, I do I like the matchup, though, of Queen versus yeah, Ember. I, I think Queen of Pain is a really good pick. I'm, I'm honestly a little surprised it didn't get banned out because you've got pure damage to go through Flame Guard, but also you have damage over time to kind of tick out on him and the slow. Uh, is good against him in lane. It's also good against him when he's trying to use remnants later on in the game because his remnants come out from him at the speed that he moves. Right. All right, game is underway. I will go ahead and introduce the uh, Rutgers squad here. We have Storm Solda on the Winter Wyvern, SSR muted <laughs> on the Ember Spirit, WWW on the Slark, Tis MC. Tissy MC on the offlane uh, timber saw and DNE on the support Jakiro. Yeah, the guarantee right. is muted because he's spamming monkey. Uh, I've seen him <laughs> in pubs. He's just going <laughs> to receive reports. All right, you can do the radiant now. So for RMU on the radiant, we've got Loyal Lion sneaking around on our bounty hunter. Sammy is going to be zipping out on that Queen of Pain. Phantom Wilfred is stomping around on the Centaur War Runner. BDV is laying down the walls on Disruptor and Shibby is going to be the Tachyon Master Faceless Void. Inside story, uh, Shibby is one of the, like, probably one of the players I've casted the most in my time. Is it Because, like, he used to play in Sivo and all these other leagues back when I first started casting. So I, lo I love the cast in this guy, and it should be a fun game. Yeah. I think he's usually a mid player, so he's uh, giving it to Sammy here and going safely in Void instead. But he is versatile in his position, but I think for Leviathan, he played mid. Yeah, I, I, he has moved positions. Yeah, he, he's times, so. played a lot of roles in his time. And, and Leviathan also, they they did do a little bit of, of role swapping as well sometimes, so, though, though not maybe as frequently as a team like OG. But um, certainly for their level of play, they did it quite a bit. Right. So uh, on this Rutgers squad, we see the dual dragons coming out again. I'm pretty sure they ran four of these same five heroes in their match last week with the Jakiro, Winter Wyvern dual supporting. Uh, it did turn out pretty well with the slows coming out of Wyvern's uh, Frost or Arctic Burn and then the Dual Breath and Liquid Fire from Jakiro. It is a good, scary combo. So Can we talk about how good Winter Wyvern and Jakiro are as supports against a Faceless Void? <laughs> uh, especially a carry Faceless Void? Like, oh. like Jakiro can sit from the outside, drop an Ice Path and a Macro Pyre, and, and Void has to run. And Winter Wyvern, uh, Winter's Curse has the range to, to be able to get it from outside the, the Chronosphere as well. So basically, you need to get both supports in a Chronosphere yeah. if you want it to be decent. I think yeah, we actually... We saw the, yeah, we saw that last week. It was both these supports against the Void as well. Yep. I think we gave Storm Soldat on the Winter Wyvern the MVP for that match because he played so well on the Wyvern, staying out of the Chrono and just saving their heroes every single time a Chrono was uh, used. It was, it was good play, so... I'm excited to see that matchup again. Maybe it won't be a fluke and he'll be able to provide the excellent play that we saw. Uh, I thought we gave him MVP for buying Mask of Madness and right-clicking into the enemy's pool. <laughs> well, you gave it for one thing, I gave it for another. <laughs> all right, all right. Everybody's all right. got their own criteria. It's always nice when things overlap. You know? Oh, yeah. Right, let's talk about this pincer movement that's going on here because 
Um, when we unpause, there is going to be a two-pronged attack onto this uh, rune, and it, it's going to be coming here pretty soon. Also, it looks like Bounty Hunter is thinking about leaving to go try to steal this top room, so he might not even be around to help. Centaur is fairly survival. Queen of Pain can blink away, almost certainly, but the Centaur... If he is not super careful about his positioning, could find himself trapped up on that plateau as the Slark comes up and pounces. And he's he's not looking behind himself. He's looking out here for... Right. The new path that a lot of these ganks are taking are this weird one through the like center of the lane and yeah. down up and behind because everybody always expects the carry just to go from the straight ahead. Yeah. And I, I wildly prefer this path, yeah. yeah. And I've seen plenty of first bloods just coming out of this even if it's only one or two heroes doing it just the surprise factor is enough to catch you uh <laughs> catch you out but you I'm, know i'm yeah. honestly a little surprised that they're thinking okay they're just backing out now yeah i was gonna say they they're, they both just instantly changed their idea maybe that pause spooked them too much gave the other team yeah. too much time to think and maybe potentially see it, they don't know where the vision is. Right, really, you know, so. Bounty Hunter could have just been standing under them to realize, you know, if yeah. they see us right now and they have all this time to prepare, let's just uh, scram. Bounty Hunter yeah, going for that. the side. Stark was uh, pretty far ahead as well. Uh, his team wasn't next to him, so. Yeah. Bounty Hunter realized that they, they weren't uh, grouped up enough, so they back away. I, I'm a little surprised they didn't try to aggress onto the bottom rune and said, like, top, you know Queen of Pain is going to be there, but bottom is going to be... Faceless Void and Disruptor. Like, that Disruptor is really vulnerable level 1, especially if he does what most Disruptors do and gets the Thunderstrike level 1. Right. The The one issue is Timbersaw doesn't provide much to that engagement, so although their, their kill potential is pretty easy, it's not uh, guaranteed. Oh, up top. Already some aggression. This shouldn't be too bad, but Centaur does not want to both lose levels to the Bounty Hunter and lose health and have to use all his regen early. Yeah. I think once Slark gets level 2, this top lane is definitely going to be a, a target for uh, the Dire Squad, but for now they're just hoping to, you know, zone out the other hero and just get their farm traded where they can. Uh, so Bounty deciding to help top while Chikiro is going to help mid, making it a 2v1 onto the co-op, giving Ember a bit of an easier time. Actually, Bounty's yeah, TPing bottom and they're back up. Bounty TP'd bottom, they have 3v1 on this Timber saw now, and Timber is not particularly survivable at level 1. He does have the reactive armor, but they're going deep for this. They have the Static Storm in a sight, or the oh. Thunderstrike, but they just get in line of sighted out of vision. That was almost a, just easy, cheesy first blood. Yeah. Uh, up top could be an easy, cheesy first blood as well, because now the Chikiro's come up here, but no. Centaur's positioning's been pretty good. Yeah. And then something to note in this mid matchup, we see an untraditional build out of SSR with that level 1 Sleight of Fist. And I think he has dodged Queen of Pain's dagger twice now already, maybe it was only once, but I think it was twice. Where every time that dagger gets oh. thrown, he just uh, jukes it real quick. I don't know if, you, if you're watching this still, but Queen of Pain is faking the dagger to yep. try and make sure that... And it's... No, he just dodged it again. Yeah, so yeah. The, although it's a weird uh, ability and it's not really that good... It does provide you a lot in this lane just to kind of stop Queen of Pain's dominance with that dagger. Well, it also, it sucks a ton of mana out of Queen of Pain. No gain, right? So so instead of getting an ability with which Ember Spirit could chip away at her health, he's chipping away at her mana instead, which is equally valuable in terms of controlling the lane and dominating last hits. Right. So this uh, a lot of emphasis uh, put on trying to zone this timber, and I definitely agree with that. If he gets a relatively good start, he's going to get out of control, and uh, Faces Void will have trouble laning against him 1v1. Yeah, both of these offlaners are actually just being zoned and harassed uh, relentlessly. Centaur is only down to one tango left, the timber also only down to one tango, and both of them only level 2. Although Centaur with the wave under his tower, he will get level 3 here, so he's doing a little bit better than the ti uh, timber. But... Still not as well as you'd hope when you only have 4 and 0 CS and you're out of regen. Oh, he's going to give I a might first be blood dead. here, though. Got bounce top and first blood going to Storm Soldat. Yeah, he just kind of walks up, does one right click from the Wyvern and gets the kill. Classic <laughs> uh, support contribution right there. But first blood yeah, going his way, gets him some nice comeback gold, gets him his boots, and this hopefully an upgraded This is not a fast hero. Boots, boots are really helpful <laughs> on, on Wyvern. So yeah. if, if you can get boots on your Wyvern very early, 
Especially against like Centaur, I, I think that's worth it. There's Ember fighting three mid. heroes in the mid lane, and it looks like he's winning. Yeah, uh, with the heal coming out of Storm Soul, that once ooh. again, this player is just being in the right spot at the right time. He will save his uh, Ember from that three man gank. No one will go down, but a bunch of harass. Both of the heroes in mid lane are at like 150 health, 200 health. Yeah. However, Radiant has access to their shrine while uh, Rutgers already used theirs. It doesn't matter. Storm Soul Dat's going to heal this guy up, so. And with just the, the Tango branch plays, that's another like 200 health. Uh, he doesn't have to worry. Yeah. But, and, but that is a, a double rotation into the mid lane from Radiant for no gain, and only single rotation uh, for the Dire. So I would say all things said and done, that's a, that's a pretty nice grab for Dire side. Oh, yeah. Uh, they just used a the smoke there as well, and it just got popped by the Ember. And. and huh. All huh. the while, Timber's, er, Timber does get to go back to lane and just get his levels. He doesn't really get beat by a Void 1v1, so he's he's content. I think uh, Dire as a whole is content right now. This gank is coming towards top lane, but... They actually might get a kill on WWW here. He leaps out of the field, so he actually might get away here. He's being chased down, but Shakira on the back line will kill the uh, Centaur War Runner, and Slark will just kind of waddle off. Slark... Almost six. He's about three creep waves away if his supports give him a bit of space, and then he'll be able to heal up. Oh no, but he's greedy. He went back in to get a TP real quick, he's and fine. his uh thing is he? Yeah, he's is fine. he? Uh, is he? he wow! Oh. If he if he had just pounced, he would have been fine. Yeah, but I guess they I guess. uh that sentry that they had just expired, so they didn't know if yeah. Pony Hunter was still there or not. And I guess a little bit of greed in his eyes going to that side shop does get him killed. But yeah, I think he thought it was still up or something and he didn't see the bounty run in, but it just expired while he was going to the side shop. On the plus side, he already had a TP, so he's back to lane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some problems just solve themselves, guys. Ping's coming out on the middle lane. This Storm Soul that was looking for a kill, but Bounty Hunter will scout him out. Ember is being a little bit aggressive here, but without his level 6, I don't see how they get this kill. Sammy's actually ticking pretty low, but he will be fine. And now this Bounty Hunter... Sitting at 70 health, also ticking low, but they're both just getting away from this by the skin of their teeth. And everybody's going to go back to their corners. Um, Seems about right. Yeah, yeah, this is breaking down, I'd say, relatively equally between the teams. Uh, the Void is coming out slightly ahead on last hits and also has not died yet. So in terms of hard carries scaling in, I think that the the Radiant are, are relatively happy where they are. Un unfortunately, also I think with the team compositions that they have, the Slark is gonna need more gold in order to, to scale into the game as well. Yeah, and Faceless is going for that Midas and has a talent at level 20 for 120 gold per minute if he goes that. So if they buy enough time for this Void to get big, he will get 6 Levin slotted pretty quickly, to be honest. Yeah, Midas so. is normally on a carry. I, I almost unilaterally think my pretty bad call, but on Void, uh, it's not actually that bad. It is greedy, but the fact of the matter is the attack speed does more on void than almost any other hero that is an early game agility hero because time lock is the majority of his right click damage yes. i'm just going to talk over this fight so <laughs> it's all good top lane the slark does manage to secure last hit or a kill onto the centaur war runner and then they find slark is or they find bounty hunter as well who tries to kill slark but he ends up going down to that last little dark pact and dot damage from jakiro so that is a two for zero in the top lane in favor of dire and now with Slark being 6, he doesn't even mind getting this harass pretty low. He'll just heal up in the trees, and he is 300 gold away from that uh, WWW classic blade mail rush. Yeah, I'm not sure that that blade mail works out super well in this game, because if Queen of Pain surprises you, you're not going to have the blade mail out for the bulk of her damage, right? She's going to hit you with a sonic wave, and then your blade mail will not really be useful after that. Mm -hmm. Um... And if, if you get the, with yeah, it, that's the other thing, right? If you get chronoed, yeah, it, the blade mail's not super useful. And at that point, just uh, having an echo saber, or something for raw stats, would be nice to have. Yeah, and the catch-up potential of if you have an echo saber, you jump back into the fight really quickly after the the chronosphere wears off. Whereas if you have a blade mail, you only come back into the fight 
with as much health as as you have in terms of your damage output as well. If we look uh, at it's bottom, very dependent. Bottom, they are going to be going for a kill onto the timber saw. They commit the chrono right at the start and the queen of pain alt, and they, uh, that will be a dead timber. Not too much gold that. going their way, but it is still a nice kill to get on that snowbally hero. Yeah, and also they're just buying more space for the faceless void to use this Midas, who has now really started to pull ahead in terms of net worth. He's 700 ahead of the Slark. And yeah, not only is he ahead on actual last hits, but he's gotten two Midas usages already. Yeah. And one thing I want to note about both these teams is they don't really have the best tower pushers. I would say Rutgers has a bit easier time with the Jakiro, but uh, we saw Chrono use there, and the tower bots aren't going to be pressured at all. They don't have the best heroes just to push out lanes in general. Right. So it looks like both teams are going to hunker down and just uh, try to farm up and go for fights. Uh, no early tower pushing coming from either team, which yeah, is I a pretty common strategy this patch. So it's quite surprising that both teams just decided to just go for brawling lineups, team fighting lineups. It looks like our Radiant side wants skirmishes, two to four man fights, whereas our record side the, the, on the Dire, they really just seem to want ganks, right? They want to pop out with the Slark, blade mail ready force an opponent to kill himself. They want to pop out of nowhere with the Ember Spirit and just blow him up with magic damage. They don't really want extended fights at this stage in the game, or, or really anytime soon, because they don't have extended fight damage. But they do really not want to have to focus too heavily on objectives either. Um, not sure... Yeah, it doesn't look like doesn't look like anyone was being saved. They're actually bottom oh. lane. It was this Disruptor against the Ember who's running away from that. Uh, Ember does snag that bounty rune, it seems. He'll just yeah. kind of waddle off as well. Disruptor harasses him down a little. Bounty's there as well, but not enough to do any sort of kill potential onto him. Oh, boy. Actually, Bounty's in bounty. a rough spot. Yeah. He's got... No, the fade time might not be enough. Okay. Yeah. Just barely. And the Wyvern DC'd at the perfect time to just uh, not contribute anything other than that first Arctic burn hit. Yeah. That... That was very greedy from the Bounty Hunter. Oh, like, yeah. I guess best case scenario, you get that kill in the Ember Spirit because the, the Wyvern's not there. Even but still, though, with pretty the... pretty close to his tower. With like, the Raindrop as well, that kill isn't going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Though, you know, the benefit of the doubt, maybe the, the Bounty Hunter hasn't checked inventory since that Raindrop. And now out. they're going for more here. This huh. Bounty Hunter, is one, he wants to go for it, but he has no mana. He only has 100 health. Yeah, and Queen of Pain just gonna die. And Queen of Pain is no blink, she's in trouble here. And that's the pain she's of a level one blink. To the tower. Meanwhile, top lane Slark will try to get a solo kill onto onto the Centaur War Runner. He will get away with two hundred health, but seven stacks, no two stacks, sorry. And the story of the game is Shibby just using Midas in the bottom lane though, right? I he is sitting at almost level eleven that's, already. That's absurdly fast for a safe laner. Yeah. Right, like, he's two levels ahead of the Timbersaw, he's more than a level ahead of the Slark, and his Midas has barely come online. And here's the first push underway for the Dire Squad, they have the Jakiro with uh, three oh, points oh, no. in Liquid Fire. Oh, T-Tours. <laughs> Top lane WWW with a gank from, uh, actually no, that was a solo kill. The gank was coming uh, to help the dis help from the yeah. other side. It was very fast. The, the centaur. Yeah, big chrono bottom though. Yeah, edge However, Winter both Waver ears. not getting caught. Hey, look at oh, that Winter okay. Waver to heal up Timber to full. Yeah, so chrono committed. They're actually probably looking to get some returns. This is gonna go. Queen of Pain gonna try to get away. Timber saw is gonna chase behind the tower. She just barely manages to blink away. Meanwhile, Shibby is fighting deep into the supports. He's two on one, dragons on either side. And here comes the Timber Sun. Now it is three on one, and Shibby realizes they're trying to back out. He throws down one more time walk. He's got the mana for one more after that. There is going to be the dust just in case there's a bounty hunter nearby. And there is, but he's not caught in it. And now Ember Spirit comes in. Two dragons, a spirit, and a giant machine will be enough to finally take Shibby down. And that is a huge kill. Not, not only is that a kill, but that's both of the ults of uh, Void and Queen of Pain committed. They didn't only get no kills from it, but they lost a Void and a tower. Like, this is a disaster for the Radiant Squad. Until that happened, I was going to say they were still dominantly in the lead despite being down a few kills. And now um, Slark's uh, ahead. Timber. Ended that fight with full HP, even though he went down to like about a quarter, and that's just the strength of Winter Wyvern. 
Well, Clemson. there will be a return heal here on the Jakiro in the jungle if Bounty Hunter comes in. Still no six. Actually, Bounty Hunter almost getting himself in trouble here. Maybe is going to be. Yeah, he will end up going down. Yeah, the Splinter Blast does manage to bounce off and hit him. No tracks came out despite him hitting level six. And now they're just on the retreat. But another Splinter Blast, that's a second kill going the way of Storm Soul Bat. Shibby is trying to poke him down in the back line. Does get a bash or two. Uses the time walk, but he might not actually get this kill here. No, he will. Is. That's Sammy finishing up the kill, and now this Timber is ticking out pretty oh, well. The bash! The That's a skill bash right there. He's yelling at his computer, bash, 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 and then it works. He was counting PRD. He oh, knows yeah. what he's doing. <laughs> All the while, though, WWW is just farming up top. He is uh, oh, tied with the net worth. And now with this glimpse here, though, he's going to be just taken right back into the middle of the other team's base. Yeah, Step that's a really good glimpse, too. Now, he's going to presumably get away here. No, Sonic Wave in two seconds. A good blink. No, nah. seven seconds. He's out of vision. He's got that extra speed, yeah. extra healing. He's safe. He's only level two blink, yeah. Um, what I was going to say is that was a really nice glimpse. The, sh the glimpse came out after the blade mail was already revealed, which means that a good chunk of that blade mail time was just spent in travel. Mm-hmm. Um, not attackable as a target, just wasting the the active time. But now with that, two towers are going the way of Dire. They are an uh, inch and away, or an inch and ahead on net worth and XP. They're about 2,000 ahead in XP, but uh, 4,000 ahead in net worth. And taking towers at this point is very important. As WWW it provides them the map control, but WW is going to die top. And they get the track at the last second, so... Three hero track kill there. That's a lot of money in their favor. It looks like a return kill is gonna be uh, going the way of the Centaur War Runner. He doesn't have much of an escape ready. Sammy's gonna go back and try to get something on, but just to blink away and they will be safe. So it's a one for one, but considering how many track kills were there, and now with a uh, Chrono secondary track kill, that's a two for one with tracks. That's big in favor of Radiant. Um, um this fight, there's some potential might... for the Void to get a solo kill onto the Ember bot with that Chrono, but he decided to save it, so Ember got away, but he's going to TP top and use it for the kill onto the Jakiro on top, but I feel like if he went for Ember there, that would have been the bigger kill instead of killing it just as support. Ember is, uh, he's a little more difficult to kill, like, he's got much more armor, and his effective hit point is a little bit higher. I'm not sure that... How low was the Ember? I actually didn't. He was uh, about a quarter HP, but he was standing wow. on a shrine, though, and I guess ah, the Void was uh, afraid of him being able to walk through it. No, time. the Blade Mail. Wow. <laughs> the Blade Mail wow. coming out. We saw this before, and we'll see it again. The, Did the... you see that Blade Mail got delivered while that fight was yep. happening? Yep. yep. That's uh, convenient, I'm sure. Ember Spirit's uh, pretty, pretty lucky. He's laughing all the way to the bank is what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, his net worth now is quite well ahead of this Queen of Pain, despite those track kills going the way of Radiant. And no Veil for him. Blade Mail better than Veil in that case. Uh, interesting synergy between his Flame Guard and the Blade Mail. He'll block the damage, but it'll still reflect it to you. Yeah. So another thing to note here, this Shibby player on the Faceless Void is going for a uh, Maelstrom, which he does have complete now, and that's typically seen as a farming item. It does do some damage, so don't get me wrong, it can help him fight, especially because it has that magic output to help deal with the Flame Guard and Timber Saw's reactive armor. No. But that's two farming items up now in Faceless Void. They are committed to just trying to farm up, go late, and outscale here. Yeah, but, but bear in mind also, as you said, that that is somewhat, like, it does increase damage. And once again, oh, jeez. I missed that, too. Yeah, WW got in too close to the centaur, he'll eat the stomp, and uh, gonna dive the, get taken uh, out. However, yeah. this CMC coming in <laughs> with the quick kill there onto Bounty. He is going to be able to move out onto the Disruptor. Centaur ult, but Disruptor didn't get the memo. He's going to throw out one glimpse, but he does get hit by the Winter's Curse and Storm Soldat getting ready. The stun just narrowly off at the Ice Path, but that will still be enough for the kill. Sammy is thinking about a return kill or potentially a blink in from the Centaur. He takes a lot of damage between his own double edge and the Macro Pyre. And Quaff has uh, Midas as well. That was a, a later Midas, wasn't it? I yeah, didn't see it. That was a late yep. recovery she Midas. She just picked it up, the, pretty much. After the Veil of Discord. Well, she's going to try to recover with a couple dragon heads as well. She does not have a stun here. And the Wyvern 
is going to just stand and fight. Queen of Pain completely out of mana. She does have a bottle to get a little bit back. Oh, up, that pounce! Blade mail out in that pounce. That was a, that was wriggle, a very... wriggle little fish. That was a nice angle there. And now dust used to the carry yeah. carrying dust. What is going on here? <laughs> Not a usual sight, but you know this player is uh you know he knows what he's doing. He knows how to get those kills, and just by you know sacrificing a little bit of his money and his itemization slots, he gets that kill. And that's two kills going the way for that uh, Slark. So despite being against a Void that has two farming items, he's actually even and a tiny bit ahead on net worth with this Void. So we talked a little bit during the draft about this mass blade mail build and how it is dependent on two things really to be successful. I'll come back to this because Shibi is trying to grab a kill. Never mind. No Here chrono, we go. but they do have the, the static field and the glimpse. Static yeah. storm will be used oh, at the okay. end of it. They'll need a bash. They do get a bash, and they get Queen coming in to secure the kill. They're going to turn around and try to get Shakiro here. Another bash comes out at the last second, but they still have the Cold Embrace from Winter Wyvern. The Scream comes out from Queen and a Stomp to follow up. Blink Centaur, they will get the secondary kill with Track. Shibby is now being chased up by WWW, but will time walk away. Ember has arrived. But Centaur is stuck between a rock and a hard place. He'll go down. Ends up being a 3 for 2. So, still... And they might still get Shibby here as per well. Pretty even no, I, considering I tracks. Oh, no, 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 they have yeah. no blink on the Ember. It was pretty even considering the tracks came off for their two kills, so 2v3 even trade, but... I don't know, does that favor one team more than another? I think that favors Radiant still because they are uh, going this greedy multiple Midas build and they're not really losing these fights as hard as uh, they could be. Could have gone a lot worse than that. They lost Shibi, but since he barely got out of that one, uh, I'd definitely say since they got the track kills, uh, they're going to take that trade. They didn't use Chrono there, or Queen of Pain also, they're ready to fight again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say it's, uh, I'll go between the two answers. <laughs> it, it really depends on what they do now, right? Because right now it's a push, and they're not happy with the push necessarily, but if they are able to engage in the next 40 seconds or so and maximize that, then they can be very happy with the previous engagement because it's set up the, the game state for. Yeah, with that fight, both the Slark and Amber got a fair amount of gold from it. And they're going to continue to scale. What looks like army you really want to do is to take a tower or something, because their map control is really hurting. If you just look at the map vision from Rutgers, it's a lot better than theirs. Yeah. yeah. And now there's a smoke gank towards mid from the side of Dire Rucker um, squad. Ember will tree himself. They will end up going and committing for this disruptor. The static field will come down and kind of stall it out, but that's not going to secure any sort of kill or save for them. That static field down, I'm thinking they just push now. Yeah. There's no reason not to. The static field is really the only reason that you don't push into a tower, right? Because mm -hmm. Chronosphere goes down, that's enough. Do a fair amount of damage, but then the static field goes down, your Ember Spirit can't get out, your Slark can't get out, your Timber Saw can't get out, and that's where you really start to hurt. So they will come in for this tier 2 tower, but if you look at the other side of the map, that's just a quick trade from the Radiant Squad. They recognize that they can't fight this. Queen oh, well, Sammy got a cut out, Ember Spirit with the root there. <laughs> yeah. Queen trying to stall up a little bit, gets a little bit too far up, and then the uh, Blink Shackles from Ember Spirit will keep her from blinking away, and they will quickly uh, get a kill. One for one tower trade. The Glimpse will come back, but the uh, Timber Saw is oh. pretty tanky. Reverse Void, oh my, the damage. That's why you get Blade Mail. Oh, wow. I was watching the glimpse back from the bottom lane. Timber tried to TP into that fight. Stark got a solo kill there onto Ember. He just blinked onto him with the blade mail. Ember actually, or uh, not Ember, Void. the Void. The Void bashed the Slark twice, which did a lot of damage to himself onto the blade mail, and then he just died. Oh no. <laughs> he just exploded. He didn't expect that either. And I guess this is the power of the blade mail build. It allows you so to let's... go for man fights like that. I was trying to come back to this point that I made during the draft, where th this blade mail strategy works really well if there are not two things that happen right the, the first thing is that your opponents can't really be able to split push if they're able to split push then they don't have to fight you and the blade mail build doesn't work super well um but the other thing is that you need to get off to a better start than your opponents in terms of overall net worth which didn't happen i'll remind you but because two members of the other team went for a midas the effective combat power was pretty much always in terms uh in our use advantage Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of actualizable items, uh, things that contributed in these fights. So I can't help but think if the Queen of Pain had gone in for something to help control a little bit, and if the Void had gone in for something to help 
control a little bit in these fights, uh, some some HP or some damage, maybe the blade mails would not have been out early enough in order to really command these fights. Right. As we see now, the queen is actually going back for that Yules to help, you know, kind of stall out the fight from uh, RU's side. But right. I think it might be a little bit too late. Obviously, it doesn't lose its value. It's still a good pickup. It also removes the chains the on herself. And the flame guard as well. Right. So it's still a good pickup, but I would probably like to see this before that Midas, or just in place of that Midas. Yeah. And once again, this Radiant squad are just going to go for the trade. They realize fighting this is pretty tough. They don't have that Chrono for another 10 seconds, so they're going to try to get that tier 2 first. Uh, they are coming back one by one. The Winter's Curse yeah, does Winter's go Curse onto the Centaur. The Centaur, and he's going to get burst it down. <laughs> the, stomp, the stomp onto the double blade mail. Yeah. It's such a silly strategy, but it works. Both of these players just blinking into the combat and then use their blade mail. The Chrono does come out, gets two, the Static Storm also gets both. That's going to be Ember blown up, and now Slark is going to go down to that magic damage. So despite the cold embrace, there's no surviving there. Whoa. Ember buys back and oh. remnants in. Oh no. He wants to kill. A very yeah, good play here. Gets both core kills. And meanwhile, this whole time, Timbersaw is just on the back line being a nuisance. Void will also buy back, but no Chrono from him. That'll be another kill going the way of this Timber Saw onto the Bounty Hunter. Void is trying to man up here, but if he gets shackled up and just He's clicked gone. down, that's going to be a death from him. That's a dieback from him. And now this looks like it's just going to be a free Rex for the side of Rutgers. They that did. honestly feels a lot like GG, right? Because Queen of Pain, I mean, she'll be back up. The Void won't be back up. Disruptor's ult mm -hmm. dropped already, so you got All 45 seconds until there's any control. Yep. 45 seconds before there's any control here. They can literally die Fountain, and they are, in <laughs> fact, going to literally die Fountain. They just narrowly missed that kill onto the Disruptor, but they don't really care. They're just kind of asserting their dominance here. They got their racks, and they're not looking to back off. They actually do get the kill on the Centaur, who's looking to get something in their uh, the retreat from Rutgers. A teleport out once again has a remnant, so this uh, storm, this winter wyvern, using the curse to buy them some time. Look at this remnant too. Is it walking really slowly? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so he was he was at uh, minimum speed. He goes glimpsed right back to base, but not before blowing up Sammy once again on this uh, Queen of Pain. This is just a bloodbath right now. So oh, I, I just want to point out that felt like we saw this uh, last week as well. Same situation there. Rutgers camped in the pool and. They're gonna do this without even taking mega creeps. I believe in the last game they did. They had mega creeps, at least two sets of brackets for this, but only one set. They're going in. And they're gonna start to feed kills back as the heroes from RMU are responding. What were you about to say, Gorgon? Uh, well, I was going to say that in the amount of time it took Shibby to respawn after that dieback, he lost three teammates. Three teammates respawned and died. <laughs> yeah, right. that's rough. And now yeah. he's going a little bit deep here. If there's a shackle coming out, no, he will get ice pathed in his own chrono and burned down by Ember's dot damage. So he's going to go down Slark, again. There's nothing they can do against him. They don't have any sort of control. They desperately need a way to hold him in place. But and without, there it is. Oh, they're okay. But he kind of held himself. But in here's place, Ember. But, yeah. You kill my buddy, I'll kill both of you. And now that's five dead. One, well, one, oh, oh no! Somebody yeah. has to live to tell the tale. <laughs> Bounty Hunter does just narrowly get away, but that's still just a bloodbath. Four more kills going the way of uh, Rutgers. Even after they get the racks and tried to back off, they just go back in and just get more kill after kill after kill. Hey, if you're if you are dealing with this in your base, the one positive light, right? The the touch of gray uh, is at least they didn't take another set of racks yet. Yeah. But now Ember going in for a little bit more will commit a remnant, but does not jump into it actually. So he's just going to back have the off. Mana for it, actually. Oh, okay. And now with that, it's going to be over 10,000 net worth and XP lead in favor of Rutgers and a Rex up on the other team. Yeah, 27 minutes. That is a very, very rough fight, especially since there's nothing in way of traditional super hard carry going going the way of Raiden's mm -hmm. draft, right? Like Queen of Pain and. Uh, oh. Void can go into the late game okay, but they don't really have anything that goes like an Ember Spirit traditionally does. I th actually think Queen of Pain is one of the strongest late gamers now due to this yeah, new like Blade Mail Octarine. Yep, you have to be level 25, so it's really for the ultra late game only. But once you have that, you're nigh unkillable, and you're just kind of a nuisance in these fights. Yeah, that means they have to survive like another 20 minutes. So I wouldn't say much. they're entirely out of it, but they're definitely not in a good position. And now with yeah. Roche going the way of this uh, Dire squad, very slowly, um, but it looks like they won't be too contested. 
Yeah, and also remember, if she's hit 25, Ember Spirit's been 25 for a while. That's true. And if, if he wants to get the, the Flame Guard absorption or whatever it is that, that he can get, where's Queen of Pain's damage against him come from? You know, she can stay alive as long as she wants if she's not dealing any damage to him. Um, big whoop. I, mean, I don't see that talent picked up much by Embers. They, I see a lot of Embers favor the chains instead. Yeah. Well, this you don't, you don't usually see roaches. Embers go late game and have trouble with magic dealers either, right? Like, oh no! Embers 1v4 in here does get caught out by a sentry. He will remnant, but accidentally come right back into the one that he just placed. His entire team is there to follow him up, but will get a three-man, two-man chrono in response. It looks uh, like Shibby will get a kill Shakira on walk into it. <laughs> Wyvern will go down, so it will be a two for one so far, but Slark is now in the fight, dealing some damage in the back line. Shibby is going for the Jakiro, will get a kill. Shibby will also go down to this burst from the Slark, and now it's going to be a three for three with WWW on the chase despite being low. We're watching Chase here, boys, because everybody's going to die. If he dies here, it's a real death. And uh, this is a bit of a comeback a for RMU. There's a lot of track gold. Uh, oh, yeah. Fight recap. It's All starts with up. a pretty rough but fight it's... from the Ember Spirit being caught out. And they did have some sort of response, but... That looks like it will end up having been about 4,500 swing. Let's see when the fight recap yep, comes up. Yep, 4,000. Okay. Right, and so uh, 5,000 XP, yeah. too. So that's a yeah. big win for a favor of Radiant Squad. And that whole time that they were doing growth, they only got it down to half health, and they didn't even, like, you know, finish it. So yeah. they wasted a lot of time. They lost a pretty big fight. Definitely it's uh, safe to say Robert Morris is not out of this. RMU. Yeah, for sure they're not out of it, but uh, honestly, are you are making a lot of play errors here. Oh, yeah. Like, if you were... If you were tallying up a baseball game equivalent to this, it would be a long sheet. For sure. Uh, if yeah, they're, Ember... they're, go they're just uh, going into this point. They're feeling themselves, but uh, that's where they're going to get caught with the Static Storm, the Chronosphere. Those are a nice three-man Chrono from Shibby there. Yeah. Uh, turning that fight. If, if Ember yeah. hadn't walked right into that Sentry Ward, it probably would have been 5-0 in the favor of their team because that was a perfect like four-man triple remnant bomb. And his whole team was on the way, but unfortunately he got caught out. So, The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that these guys are feeling really good because earlier on in the game they were to take these fights. And even if they didn't go super well, they would be back up and ready to fight before Static Storm and Chronosphere were mm -hmm. available again. right? But you're no longer in that stage in the game. If you take a fight and lose that fight... Both of those ultimates are going to be ready by the time you're ready to fight again. Um, so no longer are the days where you can just kind of bait it out, lose a fight, but then go win two fights in exchange for it. Chrono gets Chrono used, but, used, but an uh, uh, Winter 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 stops both of the aggression. And now it's just going to be turnaround kill for SSR, uses the triple remnant, kills out Void. Centaur will try to ult away and does have the distance, and with a blink of there, he will secure his escape. A glimpse onto the Ember just gets him further away, but now they're looking back for that bounty hunter. Uh, there's no dust on the uh, Wyvern. Yeah. It's on Jakiro instead, and he won't have the uh, move speed to catch up. And they keep going right back for this Roche pit. That like Before that fight happened, Timber was just standing in the pit with an Arcane Rune and his ult on Roche and just kind of ticking it down. And now with Slark having a little bit of Essence Shift, he will be looking... And a Scotty completed, they will have a little bit more damage here. Finally finished this Roche that they started about four minutes ago. And off of that, it looks like they're going to want to pressure that last tier two remaining tower top lane. It's interesting, the Slark is very heavily um, favoring, with two out of his three ability grabs, or talent tree grabs, mm -hmm. he, he favored sustain, right. rather than than just straight up damage or burst, which, which is contrary to what I would expect based on how they're playing the game, right? Like, these fights, I guess they are lasting a really long time, but in theory, they don't want them to. They just want to take five people really, really quickly. Um, I'd imagine it's just because he has that blade mail. He just tries to bulk up as much as he can and lets the blade mail do more work. Well, but the weird thing is that's what I would have expected too. He's going to die here, but he does have the Aegis. Now we're going to go ahead and the Centaur ult as this fight continues. And Centaur going to get back up into the base of the Timber Saws chasing, but he is tracked. Very slow Timber Saws. The Void moves in onto him. The tree to go down, and there is a very nice ultimate coming out from the Wyvern. And the damage coming out from the Jakiro as well as Wilford throws down a stomp is trying to run away the track will get him out a little bit faster meanwhile everybody trying to shrine up as everything starts to go wrong in with the blade mail from the Slark he is moving out Chronosphere is finally out 
and he will not really be able to get anything done here. Fortunately, Wilford is there as well with the double edge and Chronosphere down. Shibby's just trying to get out. He does not have to help the fight. This the shrine has already been used. The Slark is going to man mode him and Faceless Void will be able to time walk away. Meanwhile, on the north side of this fight, Loyal Lions trying to zone a couple people out. He will end up going down for his trouble, but he gets one track out before he does. Slark is going to feed another track kill. There's going to be an additional stun. Double Edge coming out, and there's not a lot of escape potential, but the pipe is there. It's going to take a while for them to burn this Timber Saw down, but an additional bash, and that is all she wrote for Timber Saw. A four man white in favor of uh, Roderick Morris. And eight just going down. Big win for RMU there. Once again, another 4,000 gold swing in their favor, and another 5,000 XP swing in their favor. So two fights in a row now with that big of a gain. and. Yeah, they do save the tower as well. It's pretty low, but... So. Uh, they use all three of their shrines there. The shrine's definitely saving them in that fight. Oh, yeah. yeah. Winter Wyvern ulted on that uh, Queen yeah. of Pain, but the shrine was up just enough to save her. That That is a really fantastic exchange of resources, too, because like those shrines won't be back before the next push comes out, but now you've exchanged those shrines' cooldowns for actual items that mm -hmm. might make it so you don't need the shrines at all. The, the fact of the matter is, if that fight had been more coordinated and a little bit more consolidated there would be a tower down at least from it if not a rack set down but right. uh, Rutgers have been overconfident uh, since the beginning of this game and really got off to a good start and refused to kind of let off the gas in terms of, of playing to their opponent's psychology instead of their objectives uh, we definitely saw them dive bot into the pool after taking this bot set of racks for like a good five minutes. So yeah. and that just shows their mindset right now. Mm -hmm. And it really hurt them uh, as they entered uh, the latest part after that, after the engagement. Or they got a bit overconfident near the Rosh Pit. They didn't have all five in the Rosh Pit. They had the uh, Ember Scout out. They lost a the fight there and then they lost fight going high ground as well. Yeah. And no, now Void no. has hit 20, so he has that gold talent, and he's just going to be farming away. They actually had two heroes run away from him right there. Slark and Timber were nearby, but Void's time walk-in made them both kind of turn tail and run. Remember what I said also when we talked about this Blade Mail strategy, just to come back to, to the what we said in the draft, bring it full circle. If they are going to do something like this, they need to make sure they're not doing it with just the momentum from the last couple of games, and they're underestimating their opponents. They very much seem to be doing exactly what we had talked about hoping for them to not do. Um, and we'll see if it ends up hurting them. It's possible that they'll... Ooh, ooh. nice. Winter Wave and all here coming up. Catch the score. Gets Void yeah. down really well, and actually is enough to show him. Wow. Might well, have to give this guy another MVP. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking that's a, a pretty nice little piece to put on your mantle if you're Storm Soul that. Like, that arguably just made this game... Easily winnable compared to a huge dredge. Yep. And now with the buybacks being committed, that will kind of dissuade this push. But they're actually blinking in once again on this Wyvern. Does manage to get a three-man chrono set up for Faceless Void. BKB used. That's going to be an instant kill onto the Wyvern. And now he's going to be looking for more. Goes right for the Jakiro rather than the Slark because he realizes Slark is a tough kill. Yeah, Tries to kill that bot. No but... BKB for him. Yeah. The time Whoa. walk out barely saves Shibby, and now uh, they're on the run once again. There, but he's rooted up once again. Shibby will have time walk when he comes down, lands right into an ice pass path, and will be clicked down. So that's a dieback from Shibby. He does manage to get the one kill, but that is not worth it. And now Centaur uses his ult, tries to get away. He had Ag, so maybe he could have saved Shibby there, but a little bit of miscommunication, miscoordination. Well. And now. Shibby was thrown up into a cyclone and then landed on an ice path. I'm not sure any amount of running is going to... It does for, It does damage yeah. reduction, too. Oh, it that's gives, true. It gives, like, everybody basically an Ursa ultimate, so you yeah. probably could survive for a second more, but maybe with the lockdown he was dead anyway. And now that will be an entirety of top lane racks going the way of Dire Squad. A return turnaround is going to be uh, attempted, but... Uh, the pipe on the timber allowing to tank up that, and, and that's GG is called. Incredible game, back and forth multiple times, but Rutgers does manage to cinch the win here. 37 yeah, I, 28. I think we can safely say that Storm Soldat is the only player here for Rutgers that consistently made the move that would move them forward rather than the move that would give them glory right like he, he's consistently in the right place at the right time he threw down several very very good ults 
he engaged when he needed to. He disengaged when he needed to. Um, for a, for a game like that, for a support like him to have a positive KD is is a testament to how well he played. And not only a positive KD, but 26 assists on top of it, most in the game. I'm impressed. Once again, he did not disappoint. Uh, that uh, four-man Webernaut, you don't see that often, but... Yeah, he got it twice. They were just uh, grouped up there and didn't really see him coming with that blink. And, he got it uh, long once... range with the Aether Lens. Yep. He got it in their base at that bottom shrine, and then again at that top fight. That pretty much secured the win for them. Alrighty, thank you for uh, following us. We will be back shortly with Game 2, but uh, a word from our sponsor really quick, and then we will be back. So thank you all for watching. I am Zingle, and once again joining me is Hachiko and special guest Gorgon. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing Vile Dragon. But let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together.